sponsors of Dave's Tackle Box. Now, if you're watching this show live, this isn't the first time you've seen this tonight. <laughs> but if you're watching it on YouTube, yes, nothing went wrong. This is absolutely fine. This is the first time we're doing this. And um, the neighbours in the next door's got, and next door's dog are not going to put me off my stride this time. It's going to be fine. Um, on tonight's show, I've got a couple of guests with me. Uh, Mark Green and Tim Bunnyface. Did I pronounce it right? Pretty close, pretty close. <laughs> and we're going to be looking at various bits and pieces. We're going to be looking at what we've been using since we got back from VapeFest last week. We've got a couple of news stories that we want to talk about. Uh, I've got a, a new toy that arrived yesterday that I bought off Amazon, which I think will appeal to quite a few vapors, actually. And, um, yeah, that's it. So uh, I know where my titles are now as well, because this is the first time I've done this tonight. <laughs> and we're back on the air. Um, good evening, Mark. Good evening, Tim. How are you both doing? I'm very good. Well, Thank you very much, Mr. Kitson. Good, good, good. I'm just like trying to make and I'm fine this as well. work. Has anyone got a hammer? Because I think that's where I'm going wrong. I haven't twatted it with anything yet. Ah, mm. oh, right. Yes, it's a little bit jerky in the playback, but whatever. Um, yes, yeah, so, so we're all well, are we? Uh, I, I gather that um, uh, you were at a barbecue when I dragged you back for the show, Tim. <laughs> uh, yes, yes, you know how it goes on a Sunday. I'll sort of just yeah. nip out, have a little bit of an afternoon session. But I'm going to another one tomorrow, so I'll make up for coming back early on this one. Yeah, it prob probably would have rained anyway, so you should be grateful. Uh, that's what I reckon. Yeah, you've got, you've got me out of getting soaking wet in somebody's back garden. <laughs> And drinking loads more beer than I'm going to drink anyway. Which would have been bad for you, so what can I yeah, say? Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. Right, okay, so uh, I said there at the top of the show, uh, again, that we're going to be looking uh, at some of the things that we picked up at Vapefest last week. So uh, for anybody, uh, as I say, is watching this live, uh, this is just deja vu you're experiencing. <laughs> and um, Mark, did you get an Aurora at Vapefest? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get an Aurora. I tell you what oh. I did get. Oh, no. no, I tell you what I did get. I got one of these, which is a, uh, a dual coil dripping atty. That's right. Uh, I got it off Daz at Safer Six. Uh, he was doing it for a tenner actually, instead of twelve quid at Vapefest, which was good. Um, I actually went, and I went to see him. I said, I need a three hundred six dripping atty because I've got the Cyan Mods cover tip for it, right? Uh, which, which I bought the year before. He said, I haven't got any. I said, Yeah, you haven't got any. I bought my tip especially so I can taste all the juices. I said, what you got? So he said, I have one of them. Uh, dual coil, very good. It just blows it out like you would not believe. Um, I've cleaned it recently, so it's nice and clean and dry. Uh, and it's 12 mil in diameter, in case you're interested. It's 12 mil, I'm, I, I, I'm just <laughs> yeah, looking I for so. a ruler. I'm looking for a yeah. ruler, is what I'm doing. Do you want to uh, go on mine? There you go. Oh, Let's cheers, mate. <laughs> um, oh, hang on, there's one on this leather. Let me just have uh, So it's 12 mil. I reckon it's a... Uh, could be 13 actually uh, okay right i'm just uh i tell you that this is the uh super t simplicity the 14 500 version 
and I'm looking for something that will fit neatly on the top and I reckon this is 10, 11, 12, 13, 4, oh no it's a bit more than that it's uh I reckon this is about 15 mil mm. that was not the most accurate measurement I have ever taken I tell you what I've got a, a dripper thing here that I also got off Dav Daz which is uh an I go something. This is uh, an I go F. And right. that, I'm guessing that what you've got is going to be quite similar to that. So I'll hold it up to the camera in a little while you'll see it, which isn't a bad fit. I can't see that because I'm not watching the stream. Right. <laughs> <laughs> just imagine <laughs> something that's slightly smaller than the 14500 top <laughs> <laughs> if i watch both if i watch the stream and stream out it would, it would go to round uh, fair up, enough so. fair yeah. enough i'll forgive you for that then <laughs> but no i'm looking for uh something uh that, that that will fit nicely on that uh what i have been doing with it is using an ego adapter and putting an evod on it which seems to work okay uh, what about a uh, pro tank mini well, yeah, isn't that kind of the same diameter as the EVOD? Ish, yeah, I'm, I haven't actually Ish. measured them. And I've kind of over tightened this on this. It's sitting on a silver bullet, which I'll, I, I, that will become clear. I'll explain why it's sitting on top of a silver bullet at the moment. But it, it doesn't look too bad with the EVOD on it at all. And, uh, and it works nice as well, which is good. Okay, and uh, you said uh, you, you, you've got some other stuff coming up on your show. Uh, I'm sure at some point during the evening that you'd already mentioned something called an Aurora. <laughs> yes, the Aurora BFT, which is this little device here, which is going to be on Tuesday's show when I filmed it tomorrow. Uh, it's a, uh, a bottom fed cartomizer, uh, and uh, you can put a little, you can put a bottom fed carter in there. It's also got two other heads. I'm going to go into that in more detail on Tuesday's show. Uh, and the other thing that is coming up, possibly the week after, and I've put it on the EVIC now, is this little thing. And that is the Ice Smoker Magoo, which is effectively uh, an Ithaca clone. The, uh, the it, it, GG Ithaca thing. Yeah, it looks yeah. very nice indeed. Um, I've had it apart already and had a little look at it, but I shall... Uh, I'll do it on camera because it'd be more interesting then. Okay. Um, so that's coming up. Um, and the only other thing I bought at uh, Vapefest was for the wife, and it was the uh, I taste the Aqua Square, uh, 900 milliamp uh, VVVW device um, from Yuka Esigs, um, which was uh, very good. They had it on this lovely little display, and it was floating during the day, but then someone broke the display and it stopped floating. Um, but uh, yeah, I said to the wife, go around and have a look, see what you want because she doesn't like big mods. She likes, you know, 900 milliamp or spinners or whatever. Right. Something that's more ladylike, you know. Uh, and she saw that one and said, okay, I'll go and buy that one. So we bought that one. Okay, um, cool. That's all I bought hardware-wise. The rest was juice. Yeah, I didn't buy any juice at all. And I, Even like the free samples that you uh, you get given, I gave most of those away before I left. Mm. So uh, I, uh, I mentioned I got that squid ink stuff, which I haven't tried because it smells... Yes, I've got a bottle I've not tried it yet. Uh, yeah. Okay, well, over to Tim. You brought back a well, Pro Tank, didn't you, if I remember right? A Pro Tank Mini. Funnily enough, we just mentioned the Pro Tank Mini. Mm. Um, I bought that back. I mean, I didn't really get much else because, you know, I have this problem. Like, uh, I work in a vaping shop, and according to my wife, I don't need to spend any money on vaping kit. So I didn't go too mad. I spent the money on beer. That pleased Russ, a few people. Um, <laughs> Pro Tank... <laughs> The Pro Tank Mini, loved it, absolutely loved it. Three days later, the glass has detached itself from the metal part um, and the juice has all fallen out of it. So I don't know whether that's a common thing or not, but I mean, I'm assuming I can probably glue it back in because it looks like some sort of glue has been used or seal it, sealant of some sort. Hold it up to the camera to hold again. It in. It's just like come apart. Yeah, the glass, the glass has got some sort of glueiness on it or, or, right. or some sort of silicon type stuff. And the metal part of it is obviously detached still. The atty part is here. Oh, so, dear. That doesn't look very happy, it, does it? It doesn't, know. And if you put it back together and think to yourself, it's gone back together, then you fill it up with juice. It all just goes and comes out the bottom. 
Ah. So I'm going to have to play around with that because it works really well. It's a really nice bit of kit. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I was impressed with it for a few days. I got plenty of juice, an awful lot of juice. And you know the one you gave me because you said you can have that. Uh, oh, did I, did I offload some of it yeah. on you? I, well, I we, we were talking. We, yeah, we were talking. We were talking <laughs> to a guy, and someone came along with a little bag of juice and said, "Do you want some gold and silver?" And you went, "No, I don't want any of that." And I went, "I have one." <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I've stuck it. I've stuck it in my ear roll, and it tastes like a fag. <laughs> what I remember to taste like a cigarette, it actually does taste like it. So whatever that was, vape base, gold and silver. So. It ain't okay. bad, actually. It goes nicely in the ear roll. Um, other stuff, I mean, I loved a lot of stuff. Um, Daz gave me um, a tank to give away on our Y4 radio. Thank you very much, Daz, at Safer 6. However, I'm going to have to order a new one to replace the one that you gave me because when the Pro Tank bought, broke, I thought <laughs> I'd give that a try. And if I like it, I'll order one in, and pay for one myself, and give it away on the radio. And that's, that's the, the David... Tank. Ah, yeah. I um, know uh, Dave Malik picked one of them up, didn't he? And it is it is it's very good. And what I see from the construction, the glass tube and the top part, they all seem to be screwed together. So it doesn't look like the glass is going to be able to pull out of this one. Um, and it's also got a detachable uh, drip tip, so you can stick a drip tip of your own choice on the top of it. And that works, and I'm, I'm going to say better, it's a better better taste, as far as I'm concerned, with the same juice in than the Pro Tank was. So that's my the extent of what I brought back with me from there, but just a lot of juice as well. So Okay, cool. Um, and I like the idea of the Magoo Atomizer, because I saw that, and uh, I'm going to press the button and have one of those down here by the end of the week. Love the idea of that. Um, that's the one Marco's going to be reviewing. Superb. Okay, cool. Hmm. Well, okay. Well, I came back with... Uh quite a bit of hardware as i mentioned last week uh including that fagatti hybrid and uh i have to say guys it is ace <laughs> i uh, i'm just going to um flick uh to a different camera angle now i'm just going to show you something that i noticed um about it and if this is going to work for me and it might, you know, there we go. I'm just going to hold this up to the camera here because I, I, I mentioned this really briefly last week uh, about the, the, the locking. It's a bottom button device, obviously. And as you can see, it goes with the, the atomizer that I already had beautifully. But the the, uh, the locking mechanism on, on the uh, button, uh, that, that that's fires. And to lock it, you literally pull down that knurled bit and just give it a slight twist either way and it's locked and uh, i mentioned that uh foggy was there as i bought it the man himself and he was saying he's already sort of remodeling it and uh and and i, I looked at it and i thought but well, that's fine and I've, I've i've figured out what the problem with it is if you do try and put that in your pocket you've only got to knock it slightly to release it and uh you won't see this marco but when you see it on the playback you literally it's about an eighth of a turn, I guess. Uh, it's obviously slotted. So to lock it, you pull it and turn it slightly. You, you literally just do that to unlock it, uh, which is great if you're using it on the desk. Um, it's not so great if you want to put it in your pocket. So I can understand why he's doing that. But he said he's going to do the uh, the, the uh, sort of the, the, the version two mechanism on it at a cost for everybody. I don't think I'm going to bother. I quite like it because I only ever use a Genesis when I'm at my desk or in the house anyway. And it's got a fantastic... I like it. I like it a lot. The cracking atomizer. Um, mm -hmm. I, I would say that I haven't been using anything else, but it's not true because I've got other toys as well, didn't I? And mm. um, I suppose uh, I'll mention... I just mentioned the uh, Super T. And I'll hold it up to that camera. And that's got quite a fancy sort of locking mechanism on the bottom button as well. It's uh, it's basically just a brass ring. And when, when you can t turn the whole thing and just the brass bit seems to turn. It's like kind of like magic. And uh, it locks up solid. And like I say, I'm, if anybody knows of uh, something to put on the top of this, it's sort of around about 15 mil, I reckon, that would fit flush on there. Please email me or... or, or 
rattle it into chat or something. Um, like I say, that I go, what was it, F, did I call it? <laughs> sort of fits, but I, I'm not a great fan of this as a dripping atomizer, to be honest with you. I'm not a great fan of the I go F, but uh, it, it fits, so it's about that sort of diameter. And um, I don't suppose anybody does a 14 or 15 mil Genesis, do they? <laughs> no, I think not much chance. Of that. I think the skinniest Genesis I've got is that UK VA, and that's like uh, it makes it about as tall as Apollo thirteen. By the time you've got it on the top, unfortunately. So, <laughs> but um, yeah, I'd really like a nice, decent atomizer to put her on the top of that. If anybody's got any ideas. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Works nice with the EVOD. I'll probably just end up keeping that on it, to be honest with you. But yeah, okay, so so that was another thing I brought back with me that I've been using quite a lot while I've been here. Uh, another thing I brought back with me, and again, I'll do, I'm going to go to uh, the other camera shot again, like that, and just replace Tim for a second. And um, you can just see it in there, it's the Kick 2. And that's actually sitting uh, in a sort of partly assembled GP PAPS at the moment. And uh, th this leads me on to something else. Um, whilst I was at VapeFest, and I've got to apologise because um, uh, I, I can't, I've been to sleep since then. And the guy that asked me this question, I can't remember your name. But a guy came up to me and he said, how do you put a kick in a silver bullet? And I thought... He must mean the battery size. I said, well, you use an 18500 battery or an 18490 with the kick. And then it's the same size as an 18650. And he looked at me like I crawled from under a rock and said, yeah, I know that. But how do you physically get the thing in there? Because it's like impossible. <laughs> and I said, no, no, it's easy. And he said, right, well, how do you do it? And I said, well, I'll tell you what, I'll do it live on my show. And he said, great. So I can't remember your name. I probably can't even remember what you look like, actually. I, but I do at least remember the conversation. So here goes. I'm going to uh, try and demonstrate how to put a kick in a silver bullet. And this can take some time. So we get back on here. Right. That's a silver bullet. And this is, this is actually, right, I better explain because he's going to accuse me of cheating. <laughs> I do have a kick, a production model kick which had the little sort of springy thing on it. So anybody that bought a kick will recognise that. And this just doesn't work very well at all. In fact, it won't, wouldn't work at all tonight. I couldn't get it to work in anything tonight. So I've kind of given up on that one. But what I do have, and it's a very similar principle, is that the prototype kick, uh, which looks pretty much the same, but instead of having that springy thing, it's got like a, just a little sort of copper or brass leaf spring on the side. But it, it, it's... You know, it's no easier or harder to put in, I wouldn't say, than uh, the, the production one. And literally, all I do is just make sure the thing goes in, because if if the uh, the contact there, the negative contact, doesn't go in cleanly, then you can end up manking it up, and that's possibly what I've done with this one in truth. Um, but then in, in terms of putting the top on, I just make sure it's going to slot in like that properly. And then put the top on. And just to check that I'm not diddling you here I'll just uh, acquire this EVOD because it's the nearest 510 thing that I've got and then hopefully this is going to work what do you reckon Tim? It's going to work? Well I would hope so <laughs> you never know though it's sizzling it's good <laughs> that appears to be working so that's how i do it that um so i've got to say it's a pig to get into some devices but the silver bullet's probably one of the easiest i would have said so uh maybe I, i'm just thinking if your spring is a bit maybe too springy in the bottom of the silver bullet or something that could be a challenge couldn't it but uh with mine i i don't really have much of an issue but as we're on the subject we may as well then just compare the original kick to the kick two for anybody that hasn't seen them 
that's the original kick like i say mine's a pain in the butt uh, i hardly ever use it because it's that unreliable uh, but it had this like sort of spring with folded over wire for the negative contact and it was rubbish uh, now you've got this like uh, two-pronged idea now the reason i'm not taking this out to show you is it's a bit of a pig to get into this mod <laughs> it fits so snugly up against the size uh, side of an 18650 mod that I have to actually screw it down through the thread until it's in and then you have to give it a bit of a shove because of the way the paps tube is shaped there's like a little collar inside as well and give it a shove down um, and put the battery in from the bottom and uh, put your switch and everything on which I know sounds like a bit of a pain but uh, once I put the top on the paps now and shove what I've been using with it which is I think this is the Igo L I always get them mixed up. No, it's an AGI. AGI, that's what it is. Well, that on there. It looks pretty smart, doesn't it? it does look pretty smart. And uh, flick that back to this camera. And this should work too. So my initial assessment of the kick too is it is a lot more it's a lot better contact you get from those two little plunger connections than you used to get off the uh, the coil or even that leaf spring that I've got because the one with the little uh, the prototype one with the leaf spring even that sort of plays up every now and then you have to get a bit of sandpaper on it and make sure the inside of the mod's really clean but because these are pointed I think even if you have got a bit of gunk on the inside of the tube it still seems to work pretty well So, just before we take our first break, um, in fact, we're probably a bit overdue for taking the first break. So we'll take the first break, and uh, when we come back, I'm going to ask the guys about their experiences with the Evo. What, what's the? Uh, it's the Evolve Kick. I've got Evo on the brain. The Evolve Kick. But uh, let's take a break first. of Dave's Tackle Box. And welcome back, and uh, I understand that we're having some problems with the audio, but um, I apologise guys, I've got stuff crashing all over the place here. You'd think for the price of this software it would work, wouldn't you really? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so uh, I was just having a quick look there, uh, there's a bit of an evolution, uh, which is quite good for somebody made by Evolve, I guess, uh, the, the Evolve kick. And I've got the prototype, the Mark One, which was, I've got to be honest, <laughs> I don't think it really did the concept justice, the Mark One, but the Mark Two is off to a much better start. Um, uh, Mark, I know you've, you've tried the kick, haven't you? No. You haven't? I, I've never had a kick, no, or a silver bullet. Oh, well, that, that, that was good, then. <laughs> <laughs> and do you know what? I've never had, I've never had a kick either because I never had any Mechanical 18650 mods. But I'm going to try the Mark II because I've ordered myself um, an 18650 mod from across the sea. 
And right. I'm going to try it out in one of those. Um, so, yeah, I will know more after I've played with it. Right. I, I was quite surprised there just watching chat go by to, to hear that Leanna Lawless has never had one. Never tried one. Yeah. Oh. So it's well. it's it's uh it's a good little uh device you know if uh if uh variable wattage uh is something that you want to try uh some of those variable wattage mods are quite expensive aren't they well well at the time the kit came out there was only really the uh the the, the brick wasn't there there was yeah but so. now there's there's lots of them so <laughs> <laughs> i think a lot a lot of people are going to buy buy something like a vamo because it's quite cheap and it does all the stuff so i suppose that's probably changed the game a bit hasn't it and mm. uh, there yeah. are other devices around as well now aren't there what's that thing that cat gave me to look at that i never did properly look at this svd thing? yeah that's the one the svd yeah so i've yeah. got the svd the evic the sid um I've got the uh, MVP and the, the V2's coming, which is uh, wattage and voltage as well. Right. Um, so most of the devices I use are already, you know, variable wattage, variable voltage. So I haven't got any mechanical mods. You haven't um, got with the any... With exception, me- I've got a telescope. That's it. That's it? Those are the only mechanical mods you've got? Yeah. Got why? A telescope. I have to ask you why. It's just the way, you know, I've bought, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You see, because, uh, you know, I mean, I, I do use um, some electronic sort of bits and bobs, you know, uh, but I, I've used that MVP thing a lot, mm. which is variable voltage, not wattage, I know. Um, but I use that a lot uh, when I'm in the hotel. Um, but that's just because it's fairly convenient and I can charge it off a USB uh, and what have you. Um, but uh, I've got to be honest, I've, I so greatly prefer a mechanical mod. It's, uh, I, d- I don't know why that is, but I'm just looking around now. I mean, just the things that we've looked at tonight is the Silver Bullet, the Fugazi, uh, the the Paps, and the Super T. And I, I, th- I, I think probably it's because they're, they're a little bit more precision made. You mm. know, and for a guy who used to uh, collect multi-tools and I'm interested in gadgets and things like that, I, uh, I don't know, it's not really rational, is it, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> but but I, I prefer them oh, definitely. So. I, I do like the fact that I can plug my EVIC in to the car, use my BlackBerry charger, mm-hmm. plug it into the car, plug the MVP into the car. I've got multiple USB outlets in the car, so I can plug them all in. That they can charge as I'm driving, especially to Scotland. Um, I'm never then without um, a mod, and I can take the battery out of the EVIC shove it into the SVD and then replace it back in the EV can charge that one as well. Right. Or while I'm right. driving. So Although it um, has to be said, if you had a mechanical mod you could still charge the battery in your EV. Yes I could. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, ah, so there <laughs> I might what have a, to buy a mechanical mod just so I'm you know I know what it's if all you, about. if you want to be in my gang, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well I said I've got the telescope which is mechanical so Oh all right then just, I'll let you I off. I just don't like I'll, it. I'll let you off then. <laughs> and what about you Tim? You, I, I, I'm guessing um, that you're more of an electronic than a mechanical. Do you know what? My first mod was an icon, same as you. That's true. So that was mechanical. I had all sorts of hassle with that when I first got it, but then I realised you needed to clean the spring up a little bit and squirt some of that black jollop in them every now and again just to keep them all working. <laughs> <laughs> was it no no locks or something? Something like that. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, I mean, that was fantastic. It's still around somewhere, but I have no idea where it is. Um, Touchwood. Um, oh yeah, Touchwood. Got? They were talking about yeah. those in chat not long ago. Actually, the Touchwood. They're they're Those they're lovely. Off. I mean, it doesn't leave the house that often, to be honest. It's been out a few times, but it just sort of sits around the house and is used with anything I want to put on it. It's still got that same battery I bought for it two years ago. It still works perfectly <laughs> as well. I have, have charged it. I have charged it. I, I yeah. use mine um, really occasionally, but it's still there. You yeah. know, it's it's still still used every now and then. Yeah. Um, apart from that, um, Odyssey. That's the only other mechanical mod I've got. And what else have I got? Everything else is electronic. Right. Everything else. Uh, but again, I mean, I do use my EVIC as a battery charger occasionally, like, we were just, like you were just saying about Marco. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's quite handy like that. Might as it's well. Quite handy Might as well. Yeah. Hmm. I'm just looking on the shelf behind me there, and uh, the vast majority of mine are mechanical. I'm certainly going to start collecting a few. 
it's time to start collecting again. Well, I don't collect mods. They mm. I, they just bloody arrive, you know. Um, I, 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 I do a lot of impulse buying, and uh, but people say that's a lovely collection, and I never think of it as a collection. It's uh, just kind of grows. So I reckon it breeds. <laughs> so I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting point though, and a, and a nice little segue into something else that I wanted to talk about, um, about charging electronic devices, and um, I'm going to do the usual trick and kick you off and put this picture up. Uh, it's camera two that I want, and if I do that, uh, as I've been like sort of showing the other mods up, uh, you might have seen this box behind. Now. I, I've got to be honest, this this was recommended to me by a guy I'm working with. In fact, he, he'd only read about it, and I've actually got two. I've got one unopened here, which I'm going to be taking out uh, on the plane with me tomorrow, because one of them I've acquired for him. And uh, this is an Advent box, and it is a battery pack. And you can see it's quite a shiny one. You can see Tim's reflection in it. Look, good. And um, the... Um, it's 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 basically uh, uh, you charge it up, and it stores power until you want to charge something. So, um, what's good about this one, and the reason that uh, we were drawn to it, and you can probably just make it out on the screen there, where my finger is, this one it does a fifteen thousand milliamp hours. Uh, <laughs> Now, like I say, I didn't buy it specifically to recharge my e-cigs, um, but I use uh, a mobile Wi-Fi hotspot thing when I'm in Switzerland. That's how I get internet on my phone. And, of course, I've got my phone, and I've got uh, my iPad, and, 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 of course, this sort of thing, which is Ego battery. And uh, I decided uh, I was going to give this one a try. And it is just absolutely a wicked thing. You press this button. And you've got, on the end, you've got a 2 amp and a 1 amp outlet and then a different size thing. But I don't know what that's for. And it comes with a, a little USB cable which you can use for charging the unit itself But if uh, by plugging it in there. But if you uh, plug it into one of these, it actually comes with an iPhone adapter to convert the mini USB into an iPhone thing so you can charge your iPhone. And it comes with one for Samsung and various other stuff. Um, but simply just to charge my ego, that's how you do it. And <laughs> that was at fifteen thousand milliamp hours, and this is a, I think this is a six hundred and fifty milliamp hour battery. I can charge that quite a few times before this runs down. Apparently, you'll charge an iPhone five eight times, they reckon, before you have to recharge the battery pack. And. Uh, so, I mean, do you guys use anything like that? Marco, you were saying that uh, you, um, you you tend to use the uh, stuff in the car mostly. Is that right? Yeah, the MVP is also very good. Um, at Vapefest, for instance, I gave it to my wife and she plugged her iPad in because uh, she was sitting around waiting for me because I was filming most of the day. So her iPad was going down uh, and I've used it myself uh, to plug in my Samsung phone and my iPhone and iPad. I've just been looking on Amazon actually, there's quite a few of those. You'll have to ping me the link um, because uh, that looks, uh, I haven't actually seen yours because I'm, I'm not watching you uh, live. Yeah, but, this, um, one's called, this one's called the Astro E5 and I think it was 3750 or something. Okay, I've just seen one here for 20 quid. <laughs> yeah, they vary a lot. Um, yeah. and uh, but, but I think this is about the biggest one uh, that's around. And it's been getting some good reviews. Mm. And uh, just bear with me a second. There we go. Yeah, it's been it's been getting some good reviews. The, the, the guy I'm working with, right, uh, he, he has what he calls his nest of cables, which he produces from his rucksack every day. And it's basically a Swiss extension lead or a plug. So he plugs that into the desk. And on there, he's got, like, endless charging cables for, for all his, 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 his tech. <laughs> and uh, and he, he he was using a, a thing uh, called a block, some something block, which was a good one. But he was saying uh, that, that, that this one is like supposed to. It, it was far more clued up on this stuff than I was, obviously. And he was saying that uh, this is about the best one around. So, uh, like I say, I bought us both one, so uh, we can uh, he can compare them. 
But um, I don't know whether you remember, Tim, um, the very first Vape Fest that we went to, mm -hmm. 2010. Yeah. Uh, a, a young guy called Wayne right, arrived. And do you remember what he was vaping? <laughs> I don't actually know. <laughs> well, I do, because uh, it was the first time I'd seen it. And what he got, he got like a, a pass-through plugged into a battery pack. <laughs> One of these oh, things. Um, uh, yeah. It was somewhat smaller than this, because this is fairly chunky, this thing. And he's got a bit of weight in it. And he had that in his pocket and a long cable with a pass-through. This is Wayne that now... Uh, has organised the last, last three vape fests. And yeah. so, so it's not a new idea, and I know these things have been around for a while, but uh, but I, that's the biggest one that I've heard of. Mm, so I saw one in Maplins, and it was nowhere near that amount of milliamps. Yeah. Uh, and it was a lot more expensive the, as well. well. I've got to be honest, I, you know, I am sort of slightly concerned that it may be, you know, when I try to take two of them through, through security tomorrow at the, on Tuesday at the airport, you know, that they may just consider it to be a bomb. <laughs> Don't mention that word. <laughs> oh, yes, that's, that's a, not a good word for airports. <laughs> I've gone mechanical, by the way, just, just you know, so I can be... Oh, well done. Too. Well done. You yeah. can temporarily be in our gang. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's fair, because I know since Tim's on a mechanical mod as well. <laughs> a nice blinging gold coloured one <laughs> right i think um yeah i just wanted to to, to, to mention that anyway and uh, i don't know if anybody uses these things in, in chat i think the first ones that i saw like there were a few thousand milliamp hours so you might as well just stuck an extra couple of 18650s in your pocket but fifteen thousand, you know that's, it's a lot isn't it that's good and, and i is, do yeah. like well, I, I, I was thinking back to Wayne and the pass through, and like there's a two amp outlet on this. There's a one amp and a two amp USB outlet, and that I, I, I got a feeling that you could have some fun with that if you had the right thing to plug into it. So uh, I, I may be looking for pass throughs in the near future. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I think uh, it's time to take uh, another break, and when we come back, I just want to have a couple uh, a look at a couple of uh, things in the sort of vaping news. And uh, so we'll be back in a few minutes. Less than that, probably. Cloud9 Vaping. Sponsors of Dave's Tackle Box. in Yorkshire for your e-cig needs. That's iVeber.co.uk and iVeber-elixir.co.uk iVeber and iVeber-elixir.co.uk are proud sponsors of VeberTrails.tv And welcome back. Okay, right. Well, during that break there, we, we've had a slight editorial um, sort of <laughs> change. Uh, it basically went along the lines of, I'm not touching anything. Because <laughs> at least as things stand, we are still actually broadcasting and probably recording as well. Although there's no real way of telling. Um, so, yeah, so we've axed some of the stuff we were going to talk about and we're going to talk about, uh, well, there's one thing that we, we've got to talk about because it's close proximity. And I, I, I'm going to start this by saying, right, I was blissfully unaware of World Vaping Day until this afternoon. 
when uh, Mark there said to me, uh, oh, are you gonna mention World Vaping Day? And I said, is there one? And that kind of gives you the context of this discussion. Now, anybody that's been watching VTTV for a while may recall that we did our kind of uh, sort of telethon last year for World Vaping Day. It was, it was a good bit of fun. Was that last year or the year before, actually? It was last, it was last year. year. Yeah. It was last last year. year. And it was good fun. I can remember uh, sort of connecting from Munich Airport on my iPad and talking to Dave and then uh, and then managing to get back home for the end of it <laughs> and, and, and joining up just, just as they were closing off. And they, oh, there, there you go, Chris in the background there. That was the 22nd of March, 2012. And um, there was quite a lot going on and we got like Janty involved and did loads of giveaways, I remember, uh, throughout the week. Uh, building up to it and it was a good event but um apparently and like i say I, I i i would be totally unaware of this if mark hadn't specifically brought my attention to it um it's world vaping day again on the 19th of september which is about three weeks away um now i i don't think anybody knows about this do they the guys did mention it on team talk Right. Okay. There. Well, yeah. I, 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 I make no uh, bones about the fact that I have managed to catch that. So it, it, it has been mentioned. Well, okay. I went on to the uh, World Vaping Day website, the one that was set up last year, and I could only see two events uh, that that were currently organised. There was one in the states, and uh, one uh, organised by Rusty. And uh, I just wondered, are, are people getting the message? I, so I, I, after you mentioned it, I went looking on UK Vapors and I found a thread and there's some people starting to talk about it now, but they haven't got a lot of time. I mean, what's your thoughts? Uh, I think well, if people I mean, haven't started stuff... Sorry, Tim. If people haven't started that's stuff, right, mate, um, they, need to, they need to move. Because <laughs> if it's going to come together, um, it needs to be quick. Uh, otherwise, it's going to be... Um, it's going to be a bit of a flop, which would be a real shame. It would. Yeah. Uh, Tim, I, I agree. I agree. Um, well, I'm going to. I'm going. I've got a venue, and uh, the venue's all sorted out. I'm going to promote it on the forums. I'm promoting it through the shops. I mention it to customers anyway. Okay. Um, but the time that it's it's so close now. I mean, it's either going to go one or two ways. Like Marco said, it's either going to be a flop, or there'll be a few. Uh, events that seem to go off well and uh, it may not have quite uh, well I mean I say the success of the last one I mean the last one was a bit wishy-washy because a lot of the meet a lot of the meetups were just like two or three people in a pub um, having a vape and a pint which is great because more than one vapor is a meeting of some sort um, that's very yeah. true <laughs> it is um, so I'm, I'm hoping that we can do something a bit bigger than that and do radio perhaps link into VTTV I mean we, we've got we've got the facilities there got fiber optic broadband we've got a 10 foot video screen um so yeah we've got all the stuff we need in the venue it's just getting the people through the door but i mean it's going to take a little bit of promotion i think um and so yeah we're going to push it all over the facebook and the pages from the shop and get the local vapors involved because i mean they all they all want to do something okay yeah that, that, pro that... problem problem is again people have said why is it a thursday we've got to go to work on friday i mean but I mean, that's the day. Why? Why shouldn't it be the day? You don't have to go to one of these events and get absolutely blanded and not be able to get up for two days. <laughs> <laughs> that's a very fair comment. That's a very fair comment. Yeah. Now, uh, it, it obviously it, it it is a Thursday, the nineteenth of September, and and um, I'm sad to say that kind of rules me out because I will be travelling home from Switzerland. But um, that said. Uh, you know, if there is something going on, uh, I should be home for about 8 p.m. So if there is something going on in the evening, I can probably dial in, but I'm probably not going to uh, attend anywhere. But you, 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 you used the term there about getting vapors involved. How can vapors yeah. get involved? Yeah. Well, I mean, the, if if uh, if you're in an area where there's where there's nothing going on, nothing planned, nothing you can see on any of the forums, then just organise something yourself. Go down to the local pub, you have a drink, and say. Would you mind if half a dozen of us or a dozen or 30 or 100 of us all come down on the 19th and have a little vape, get a local vendor involved to pr promote with a raffle or something, um, find a charity to give the money to. I mean, it's ever so simple to do it. And it doesn't mean how many people are there. Um, you know, that's that's what we did last year. We yeah. got a few vendors involved and got some raffle prizes. 
gave the proceeds of the raffle to the local kids cancer charity um, and we had 30 or 40 if I remember rightly um, from the promotion we did via the shops and uh, on, on our Facebook pages personally and wherever else we could promote it um, so you know I think if you're going to be getting sort of a general populace involved when it comes down to vapors it needs to be promoted properly um, through 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 the website or through there is there is a Facebook page for World Vaping Day as well as if I remember rightly, okay, um, which Sam Munro is running. Okay, um, great. so anyone who get in touch with Sam really if you're going to get if you're going to do an event or organise a small event, large event, whatever, get in get in touch with Sam and he will put it on uh, the World Vaping Day website as well as mention it in the Facebook. But it's all about just getting a few vapors together, no matter how many, just, whatever you can do. Brilliant. Um, okay, thank uh, you for that, Tim. And and just to confirm, then, so you're running an event in Eastbourne, in Hailsham. In Hailsham. Okay, cool. Yep. Uh, yep. And Corn we, Exchange. We know that the uh, the uh, pub in Woonwell, the name of yep. which I, escapes me, and I don't know how. It's the Working Men's Club, Dave. It's the Working Men's Club in Woonwell. It's, yeah, Woonwell Working Men's Club, uh, Station Road. If you go to the the Vaping Day 2013 page. That Rusty set up, World Vaping Day Yorkshire for that one. Uh, and of course, if anyone's going to do an event, let us know as well, and, and we'll give a shout out on Vape Trails TV. Absolutely, we will. Yeah, and you know, I mean, I'll make damn sure that I that I give that as much exposure as I can. Um, mm. Yeah, Rusty's actually posted a comment in chat at the moment. He's saying that the the uh, that in last year it was at the Anglers, uh, but this year they're uh, using the Working Men's Club, so that's cool. And I gather that uh, Gary Dibley is having a shed meet, he says. <laughs> Though I suspect he's probably not too serious about that because he's now talking about taking his PA somewhere. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, um, you know, the, 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 as with any of these meets uh, and these events, uh, they, they, they succeed or fall depending on how many people uh, stick their necks out to organise something. So as Tim's saying there, you know, I would say, you know, if, if, if you want World Vaping Day to be something um, uh, memorable, then organise something. Uh, get in touch with Sam Munro through the World Vaping Day Facebook page, and that'll give it a bit of exposure. Um, get on to the, uh, into the local papers, local radio, that kind of thing. I'm sure they'll give it a bit yep. of exposure. Uh, especially seems uh, half of them think we're all evil. You might even get some of them to come along and have a look. So, <laughs> yeah, okay, brilliant. Now, uh, I realise that we are we are a little bit short on uh, this show by about 10 minutes, but I am having so many technical difficulties here that I'm going to, I think, call this one to an early end and put it out of its misery <laughs> before it becomes too much of a car crash. Uh, I've no idea what is actually behaving itself and what's been recorded here. Um, so I'd just like to say, before, before I disappear, I'd like to say a huge thank you to Mark and to Tim uh, for stepping in at what was fairly late notice and uh, rearranging their Sundays to accommodate. Um, I'm going to, uh, as soon as I've gone off the air, I'm going to uh, kick the crap. I mean, um, make some adjustments to this setup and uh, hopefully we'll get it sorted out for next week. Um, so I do apologise for the uh, sort of stop start nature of it all. Um, but as ever, thanks very much for sticking with us. Uh, there's plenty of people hung on in there and we appreciate it. Um, I'll see you next week uh, and until then, thanks for watching. Good night.